Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm just gonna be testing out a whole bunch of makeup, like a whole bunch of makeup. Um, I bought most of this in December because you know, like every brand had massive amounts of sales and I just kind of stocked up. So, plus there's some Christmas presents here in here and everything. So yeah, so we're just gonna jump right into it. I'm not in the mood to do like a whole fancy intro or anything. So we're just gonna jump right in. Um, some of this is new, some of it, not most of it, but some of it. So I'm gonna go in with the new Maybelline Master Prime Hydrate and Smooth Primer. It's very thick. Like I'm actually struggling to squeeze the container out. Um, it just looks like a basic white primer. Very lotion-y, very thick. It's like paste rubbing on. Wow. It's already super hydrating, like I can just feel it sinking in. That's crazy. That feels so nice. It's a little bit cooling. That feels really nice. Alright, alright. I like it so far. So for foundation, I'm going to go in with the Tarte Empowered Hybrid Gel Foundation. Um, this is by no means a new foundation. I think this came out like three years ago, uh, but it was like 75% off on Ulta last month. So I picked it up. Um, I got the shade Porcelain, which is the lightest shade. I also picked up the brush that they make for it that is like recommended. So we're going to do the brush on one side and Beauty Blender on the other side just to see how we like it. So this brush has the flat top kabuki and then actually a little spatula on the end. So I'll use that to get some out. Might be too much. All right. It has a scent. It's very like clean, but it's definitely scented. It's maybe a little too yellow for me, but well, for my face, because I have tons of redness on my face, but my neck is much more yellow, so it should work perfectly for that. This has really nice coverage. Let me move some things around here. <laughs> okay, that, might, that lighting might be better. Um, this has really nice coverage. It's already looking fairly cakey. On my skin, I might have used too much, but that's just a operator error. I don't, it don't look terrible. It looks fairly similar to most foundations on me, so um, I'm not going to complain too much. I know I've got a lot of texture on my skin right now. Uh, the North Carolina air did not agree with me. My face was breaking out literally the entire time I was there. That was fun. Um, let's do... A little bit more on the forehead. Covered up all the um, redness, all of the pimples. Like I said, though, it's just showing a lot of texture, which I'm not obsessed with. Um, all right, I'm going to go in with the Beauty Blender and see if I like that any better. Okay, um, coverage-wise, I can't tell if I'm getting lighter coverage because I used a sponge on the side or because I didn't use as much. So let me try and add some more. I'd say it definitely looks less cakey on the sponge side. But I'm also getting better coverage on the brush side, so it's one of those that, like, it's one or the other. You're not really going to get both options out of it. Um, I mean, it looks fine. I'm not wowed by it, if that makes any sense. Like, it's not blowing my mind or anything, but it looks nice. Okay, so for concealer today, we're going in with the YSL uh, Concealer. Touche Radiance Touch. 
can see their pin. Um, I started clicking on this the other day to see about the shade. I got this in the uh, Sephora Favorites box. Um, this is shade number two. I think it's going to be a little dark for me for under eye highlighting. Um, but I think it's good for actually concealing shade wise. It might have terrible coverage. I don't know, but we'll see. I don't love the fact that this isn't a pen because I feel like I'm wasting a lot of product and using way more than I need to. And I feel like I'm just going to like blaze through this. Um, but we'll see. If it's amazing and life changing, it might be worth it. I doubt it, but you know, maybe. Um, my hair is driving me crazy today. What? Where did that go? There's that, uh, okay, so that did nothing. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, maybe this would be good for someone that, like, doesn't have a whole lot of eye issues and doesn't need, like, tart shape tape type of coverage, but I do. I have dark circles. I don't get near enough sleep. I don't know, it looks like I didn't put any concealer on. Like, it looks like I just, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> I feel like it's too expensive to be so unnoticeable. I'm gonna use the Kat Von D Locket setting powder to set this because I don't have like a new setting powder. The Tarte Foundation seems to be setting down. I might do a thin layer just to make sure because it feels really nice though. It feels really like my skin feels really like plump and hydrated. Um, so that feels nice. Okay. So I went ahead and set my entire face and then my brows, um, on first glance, I don't think that the setting powder changed the way the foundation looks, which I appreciate. Um, it doesn't look cakey or dry or, or more cakey or dry or anything like that. Um, so to finish off the face, I'm so freaking excited. I finally got my hands on this baby. Oh, look, you can see me. Um, this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Volume 3 palette. So that's what it looks like right there. You've got the um, two face powders, the highlight, two blushes, and a bronzer. So I'm going to take the first finishing powder right here on the e.l.f. Um, highlighting brush and I'm just gonna run that on my under eye. I love the way that these powders look on my skin like they just make everything look so perfected and amazing. I'm just I'm obsessed. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take the Flower Beauty blush brush and I'm gonna take this middle blush. It's a little more mauve-y um, and a little less out there than this, like, bright pink. Oh, goodness. Okay, that was... Okay, so, uh, light hand with these blushes. Holy crap. Crap, 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 crap. That's, um, way more pigmented, pigmented than I usually go for blush. But that's all right kind of emphasizing the little bit of acne that I had right here that wasn't very emphasized beforehand. It's a beautiful blush though. I really need to I need a powder brush. One sec. So I'm just gonna take this powder brush and uh, attempt to calm this down a little bit because it got a little out of hand. I'm gonna take another elf highlighting brush and go in with a bronzer. Normally I do bronzer than blush, but I uh, didn't think that far ahead, apparently. 
yeah, I'm gonna have to try this again before blush because I can't really distinguish the two at the moment. But I feel like it's not really doing much. And if it's not doing much on my skin tone, that's a problem because pretty much every bronzer should be doing something on my skin tone. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit to the temple just to balance out the face. Oh, well, it's easy to see up there. Uh, now I see it. It's just a very nice, like, natural, sun-kissed, back-from-the-beach kind of bronze. So, definitely loving this. So freaking excited that I finally got my hands on it. I thought I wasn't going to get it because it's sold out and, you know, it's limited edition. But my mom surprised me with it because she's the best. Um, and then for highlighter, I'm actually going to go in with the Hourglass Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. This also came out in the holidays. I'm going to take my regular highlighting brush. Um, let's go in with the first shade, I think. This is what it looks like, by the way. We've got a pink shade, a yellow shade, and a bronzy neutral shade. I think we're going to go in with the pink shade right off the bat. God, it's so freaking pretty. Oh, it's not like bam, I'm wearing highlight kind of highlight, but it's it's beautiful. It's very subtle, lit from within. But can definitely be built up because now it's very like bam, I'm wearing highlight. <laughs> okay, so that's definitely a winner. That's absolutely gorgeous. I love the way that looks on the skin. And it's not glittery. It's not chunky. It's just very naturally bright, if that makes any sense. It's beautiful. It just is. Okay, so next we have the star of the show. Oh my god, I'm so freaking excited. The fact that I own this palette right now it does, I, oh, I don't even know what to say about how excited I am to start playing with this palette. My amazing husband got this for me for Christmas and I am obsessed with it and I haven't even touched it yet. I've been so good and I have, <sighs> okay, so let's just jump right in shall we um i'm gonna go in with the wet and wild brush this is their um crease brush what am i gonna go in with okay so i'm gonna go in with this um pink shade right here it's like a it's looking very white on camera but it is not white in person there it goes there's the color pink so i'm gonna go in with that pink shade just as like a really light um, transition shade type of deal. And I'm just gonna fluff that all over the place. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with this middle shade here. Right there. It's called Horizon. And I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing. I'm just gonna fluff it everywhere and not really worry about where it ends up because I'm going in with a very light hand with it so it's just going to look very diffused and not crazy. I actually appreciate the fact that these seem harder than normal shadows. Um, I definitely have a problem with like going in like a savage and then not thinking about how much of a mess that can make. Um, so I appreciate a palette that's gonna like keep me from making a mess of my eyeshadow. I'm just gonna keep building that color up and the darker I go the more into the crease I'm gonna focus it just to make it look like it's more than one color when it's really just the same color built up a lot. Okay, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I don't know what I wanna do. Um, Alright, so I'm gonna go in with this orange up here just a little bit darker. It's the shade... Cin 
Sanai, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of that and really focus that in the crease. And then I'm gonna take a fluffier brush. One of the ones from the uh, Anastasia palette. And I'm just gonna fluff that out. See what it looks. With no adder product, by the way. Is there something on this brush? Crap. I don't think there was, but let me just go ahead and get a different one just for shits and giggles. Alright, and I'm gonna take the brighter orange on the same brush. Just to make sure that it gets nice and blended. I'm gonna take the chocolate brown down here and I'm going to take this brush. It's the e.l.f. blending eye brush. I'm gonna place that right here on the outer edge. Now I am like tapping the brush off after I go into the color every time. <clears throat> but I'm not seeing a whole lot of fallout, which Is exciting to me. Okay, right. and then I'm gonna take that same white wild brush and blend it out a little bit. That might be one of the easiest to work with browns that I've ever found. It's pigmented, it's easy to blend, but it doesn't blend away, which is usually my main issue uh, with eyeshadows is the browns and like the darker colors that I put on my outer corner they always end up blending away like immediately and I didn't do it but it did actually blend easily which is exactly what I'm looking for okay and then all over the lid I'm gonna go in with this pinky toned rose gold shimmer it's called atmosphere so I'm gonna take flat brush and I'm gonna go in with no setting powder or any setting powder any setting spray or anything first just to see god damn it there's something in my eye I just want to see the pigmentation of it first all right that's not bad it's not bad it's not super I guess pigmented but it's not like blingy um let me try my finger Oh yeah, that's better. All right. So finger is the way to go. I'm getting quite a bit of fallout with it though, which is surprising considering I'm using my finger. That is a beautiful shade though. It's exactly up my alley. Kind of shade that I love to use all over my lid. So then for the lower lash line, I'm going to take this smaller e.l.f. brush. This is the eye crease brush. And I'm going to take the darker orange color. And I'm going to put that all over and match it up with the outer corner of the top lid. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that dark brown just on the outer edge. God, these colors blend together so seamlessly and like with no added effort. I'm just, I'm obsessed with it. It's like this was... I'll be honest, this was not a very out there kind of look. Especially considering what this palette can do. But, I mean, I I didn't have to try with it. Like, the colors just blended together perfectly. Which, I guess, is a good thing considering it's $130. Like, you want it to be very, very easy to blend. And worth it. So, for the inner corner, I'm just going to take the um, Hourglass palette again on a little pencil brush somewhere in here there it is and I'm just going to take the same pink color and just put that on the inner corner okay a couple more things that I want to try out so I got the Tarte Tartist uh, mascara this is the is there anything else about it I, don't know, I think it's just the basic Tarte Tardis. This is a 
very bendy brush. Very bendy. Um, very short, tight rubber bristles. Um, let's see how this works. Don't know how I feel about this. I usually use the natural fluffy type of brush, um, brushes. But we'll see how this works. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I like how skinny this brush is because it I can get the inner and outer corners really easily. Where, you know, usually with the fatter brushes, I just have to kind of leave the stragglers alone and let them just kind of not be there. Um, but this formula seems to be causing quite a few clumps. Um... And I like how black it is. And it's doing a lot for the length, but not as much for the volume, which I usually prefer both because I don't know, I like my lashes to be like really out there. Especially since I don't wear false lashes. I like to my for my real lashes to look really big and dramatic. I do like it for bottom lashes though. It's making those look very dramatic. Um but again, it's causing a lot of, like, not so much, like, clump clumps, but, like, the lashes are, like, sticking together in, like, little precise, very, like, doll-like. Does that make sense? sense? Like, I've got, like, three here that are sticking together, and then, like, over here there's another, like, three that are sticking together, and it's very, like, clumps that are very, very separated. If that makes any sense at all, which I don't think it is. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I don't like this mascara. Um... It's a dud for me. It. I like the brush. I like how skinny it is. I like how I can get everything without getting it all over the place. But the formula is just not there for me. It's a little too dry. Um, feels a little sticky. And my lashes are just sticking together weirdly. And they're just not like voluminous enough for me. They're, they look long. And they're very black. They're just not like... You know what I'm trying to say? I don't think any... I don't think I'm making my point clear. But... That's all right. Uh, that was definitely dubbed for me. And then the last thing is the Marc Jacobs new lipstick. This is, what is this called? It's the liquid lip crayons. It's supposed to be a liquid lipstick and a crayon. So you get like the long lasting of a liquid lipstick, the ease of a crayon. I got mine in the shade Night Mauves. So this is what it looks like. I have been swatching this and it is insanely creamy. So I'm very excited to put it on my lips and see how it lasts. My lips are very dry right now. I should probably do a lip scrub before I do this, but I'm not really in the mood. So we're just gonna go for it. <laughs> All right, so this is basically my normal color. Um, that rosy, mauve nude, my lip but better kind of color. It's just kind of my go-to color. Um, it's interesting. It's very creamy, but it also feels almost powdery on the lips. And a little heavy. I don't know, like, I can feel it. And it's kind of driving me crazy. I've only had it on for a few minutes. Um, I don't know. It is very much like a liquid lipstick in a crayon because it's creamy. It's drying down to be very powdery and dry. Still got some shine to it though, which I appreciate. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I'll have to update y'all in the description box because I, I don't know how I feel about this. It feels really weird on my lips. It's kind of driving me crazy. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to reach for this just because this feeling is not very enjoyable, if that makes sense. So, <clears throat> goodness. So, to recap, um, Hourglass killed it with these palettes. They are absolutely beautiful. They're amazing. They're, I love them. Um, Natasha Nona, just 
of course I love it like how could I not it's beautiful it's exactly what I like in shades and blendability blendability everything is just there it's perfect um the only thing I would say that I kind of wish they had done was a matte cream shade for brow bone and setting like uh eye primer and all that but it's really not a big deal I can just um use other stuff but that's probably the only thing that I would say is missing from this but um this packaging is like the most luxurious thing I kind of I'm, I'm obsessed with it like I just yeah it's fantastic um the foundation I will update in the description box I'll wear it for the rest of the day and kind of see what it comes out to look like um I did really like the Maybelline primer this was very thick and pasty but I mean it was very hydrating it immediately soaked in felt very cooling and moisturizing on the skin and this was definitely a hit for me so yeah so I hope you guys liked this first impression type of video um I will of course leave my feelings about things in the description box like I've said a million times now um but yeah so I hope you guys like this video please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next one bye